Hello and good evening. Thank you for tuning in with us at Harris County Public Library. We're in full swing with our annual summer reading program, which is Tales and Tales theme this year. And with that, we have another wonderful program for you this evening. In the studio tonight, we have Andy Rue for part one of Land Tales, where we'll do some crafts and sing and dance along while learning about some of Earth's most amazing creatures. So without further ado, give it up for Andy Rue. Hello, thanks Sarah. Good to see you everybody. Welcome to Land Tales. Tonight we have three special tales we're going to make. We are going to make a lion tale, a peacock tale, and a snake tale. So three different tales today for some of our land friends. And first, you'll need to get some supplies together. You'll need some paper. So if you have construction paper, that's going to work great. If you have just regular paper, that's fine too. It doesn't have to be colorful like this. Um, also grab a pair of scissors. We'll need a pair of scissors tonight. Some tape and some glue. So if you have a glue stick and some crayons. So you can grab some of those. You don't need any particular color or kind, just whatever you have around. So while you're getting your supplies together, I'll start with an animal song. Here we go. I am a duck. I swim upon the pond. I kick my feet, but I am calm. I am a duck. Quack, quack, quack. Can you quack like a duck? Here we go. One, two, Three, quack, quack, quack. <laughs> I am a dog. I bark all night long. I sing my barking song. I am a dog. Woof, 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 woof. Can you woof like a big dog? One, two, three. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> I am a cat. I like to scratch the couch. I hunt for mice under the house. I am a cat. Meow, 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 meow. Can you meow like a cat? One, two, three. Meow, 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 meow. There are so many animals you see. And we're all friendly, so please don't, 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 don't be me. I am a snake, I slither in the grass, I shake my rattle when I'm mad, I am a snake. <laughs> Can you slither like a snake? One, two, three. <gasps> All right, here we go. <laughs> it's a lot of slithering. I am a sloth. I move really slow. I only have three toes. I am a sloth. Can you sigh like a sloth? Get ready, here we go. One, two, three. <sighs> I am a worm, I am so slippery. I live in mud under a tree, I am a worm. Inch, inch, inch. Can you inch like an inchworm? One, two, three, inch, inch, inch. There are so many animals you see, and we're all friendly, so please don't, 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 don't be mean. La da 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 da, la da 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 da. There 
there we go. All right. So that is the animal saw. And I hope you enjoyed that. We had a lot of different animals in that one. And now it's time to move on to some of the different crafts that we have. Some of the tails we're going to make tonight. So we have first a lion tail. So these are, um, the lion tail is a little bit on the easy side. So they're going to get a little bit harder each time we make a tail. But this first one, the lion, the, the cool thing about the lion is that the lion actually has a black tassel at the end of his tail. And this helps the uh, cubs, if the lion is going through the tall grass, this helps the cubs see where the lion is going. It can also help with other lions when they're hunting together, if they want to follow one specific lion on the way to the hunt. So let's take a piece of paper first and you can find one of your crayons if you have um, a black crayon you can grab that so i'm going to use a, a brown piece of paper here and i'm going to use a black crayon so let's try this first uh, what i'll do is draw a line across here towards the the top part of the paper so about like maybe like this this is going to be our tassel end so i'm going to draw a line just like that see that and then we can start to just shade this in like that. See how I'm doing that right there? So we can shade it in. Lions are really, really pretty. Do you know some lion facts? Maybe you could share some lion facts with us. Oh, Sophia, you said that you liked the show. Thanks so much, Sophia. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Hope you're excited to make some tales with me. Just shade that in. And so it's going to look about like that. Okay. Now, we can do the other side, too, if you want. Let's do the other side real quick. And you can see I'm, I'm actually working on a big piece of cardboard tonight. I like doing that because I can be kind of messy without getting my table all dirty. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we have it shaded on both sides like that. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is start to roll up our tail. So we're just going to take the piece of paper and we'll roll it up. So we'll roll up our tail. And depending on how thick you want your tail to be, you can roll a thicker tail or a thinner tail. But it should look just like this. So you have your little tassel on the end and then this is the rest of the tail. And we'll take a little piece of tape, once you get it rolled up, we'll just take a piece of tape and tape it together. You can also glue your tail together too if you'd like to glue it. It might take a little bit of time though for it to set. So today we'll just use a little bit of tape. You can even roll the tape up like this too, so that it's double-sided. And then tape the other side of it. So there we go, we have the first part of our tail. And then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to start to uh, sort of press our tail down like this and then we're going to make the tassel. So to do that, you take your scissors and just cut in some strips all along the edge, all the way to the line on your 
tassel. Okay, so that line that goes across your tail, we'll take that and we'll start to trim our tail. Oh, here's an interesting lion fact. This is awesome. Somebody posted, lion roars can be heard from five miles away. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Lion roars can be heard from five miles away. Somebody's asking what my favorite land animal is. What's my favorite? That's what Sarah's asking. What's my favorite? Boy, that's, that's a really tough choice. What would my favorite be? I really like monkeys. We have a monkey in the Andy universe named Jojo. Jojo the monkey. Maybe we can play Jojo's song today too. And look at that. So when you cut the end of your tail, it's going to start to look like a tassel. See that? So the more that you color it uh, before you cut it, the more it's going to look like a black tassel. You could also take, if you wanted to, you could take a piece of paper like this and then take a black piece of paper and then just glue a little part of it like this, for example. If you want your tassel to be really dark, you could glue it together like that and then roll it up. Uh, actually, you do it like this, this way and then roll it up and then you could have a paper tassel that's black paper or you could color it like this which I like to do and so there's your your tail your lion tail and now one of the things I like to do is make a little um, wrist band for the tail so that we can actually wear our tails and pretend like we're a lion so we'll take another piece of paper and this just has to fit around your wrist. So we'll cut a little wrist band. Let's see. I might have a bigger wrist than you. Oh, that looks like it's gonna work. So I can cut just like this. You take any color you like for your wrist band. And then take that and put it around your wrist. And if you have somebody at home that can help you put your wristband on, that's really helpful. But we're going to put this on the, the tail first. And you can either do this with glue or with tape. So if we tape it, bit of tape oh Marty says that the red panda is her favorite land animal oh that's a such a pretty animal the red panda here we go so we've got a wristband and then I'm going to put this on my wrist Let's see maybe further down my arm like that there we go. Put the tape on one side, then lay our arm down flat. Tape the tail together. There we go. We have our tail. See that? So I have my lion tail now. Whoa. And you could make an even bigger body for your lion if you wanted to. So now that you have this tail and you know how to put it on your arm, if you wanted to, you could add another piece of paper here and start to add legs for the tail. But I like I like doing this too. Or maybe even you have a lion shirt that you like to wear that could match your tail. So, but that's how you make your little lion tail. Now, the other thing about these uh, lion tails, they, they'll lead the other lions to the tall grass, but lion tails can also let you know how a lion is feeling that day. So if a lion flails their tail around like this, like, don't bother me, that means they, they want you to leave them alone. So be on the lookout for those lions and their tails and, and make sure you look at the tail to find out what kind of mood the lion is in today. <laughs>
Okay, so that's our first tail, our lion tail. This is really fun. Well, another thing I like about this tail design is that it also kind of looks like a drumstick, like one of those hot sticks that are put together. So if you drum with this, it has a nice sound. So if you want to play along with me on some of the songs today, you have this really cool drumstick. There we go, the lion tail. So that's our first tail today. All right. Now the next one that uh, we have going on today for tails is from our friend, the peacock. So peacocks are the male bird and then there's the peahens that are the female birds. So peacocks and peahens and they're both called peafowl, P-E-A-F-O-W-L. And peacocks have these beautiful feathers that spread out behind them and they're known for having these really beautiful um, eyes, these circular patterns on their tails. Now they use their tails to attract, the male uh, peacocks use their tails to attract the female mates during mating season. And they shed their trains, so that's what they call their big uh, plumage of tail, they call that the train and it can be up to six feet long and they shed it after every single season. So let's make a peacock tail and for this one we'll have our, our wrist band is actually going to go around this part of our arm because if you've seen a peacock before they have kind of this long neck and their head can kind of look, your hand can kind of look like a peacock. So if you go like this you can imagine that your hand is a peacock and this is the the neck of the peacock so let's get started with our peacock first you can pick um, any color of paper that you like i'm going to use let's see i'm going to use maybe this how about this red one to start so i'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to fold it like a fan. And we're going to do this um, on the short side, like this. So take a piece of paper. And if you need to measure your folds, if you want to know how big to make them, you can use your thumb, so the width of your thumb. So look at your thumb, hold it on the paper, and that's about how wide you want to fold the paper. So here we go. So we fold it over once like that. See that? And then we're going to flip it over and fold it back the other way. Like that. So once you start folding it, it's going to start making this cool zigzag shape. See that? So just keep flipping the paper over and folding it. Now our friend the peacock likes to live, you, you might have seen peacocks in all kinds of different places, um, but they prefer to live in the forest. So we had our, our friend the lion out in the jungle and we have our friend the peacock in the forest. Here we go. Okay, so this is what your fan is going to look like, and it looks kind of small, right? Now if we take this and we fold it in half like this, so you take one end of your fan and fold it to the other half, and we put it together like this, then we can stretch it out And you'll see it gets a little bit wider, and but there's this gap in the middle. So we actually need to put a little bit of tape in the middle or you can glue it together. So 
let's see if we glue this let's use some glue we're just going to glue one side to the other Do I have any land animals that I own, like pets? Uh, I do not have any pets in the Andy Runiverse, though. We have all kinds of singing and dancing animals, like our friend Side the Sloth. We have Jojo the monkey. And so we go on all kinds of fun adventures with our animal friends in the Andy Runiverse. Let's see, let's glue this together. Okay, we can kind of hold on to this. And there we go. There's the middle part. Looks like it's holding pretty well. Yeah. So there you go. You have your, uh, your fan so you can imagine the peacock opening up its feathers in the back. And the next thing we need to do is add our wristband. So we're going to do that next. So let's grab another piece of paper. See, I'll use this purple one. And this is going to be our, our armband. So my arm's quite a bit bigger than yours, I imagine. But your armband's definitely going to be bigger than the wristband that we used. with our lion friend. So here we go, this is my armband. Use a little bit of tape. So we're gonna tape the armband first to the, the fan. We'll do it right in the middle. So you take your, your armband, tape it right in the middle Or you can glue it. Let me ask you this question. Do you think peacocks can fly? Do you think peacocks can fly? It's a question for tonight. Normally when you see a peacock, they're on the ground, right? So maybe, maybe they can't fly. Okay, so this is the, the trick for putting on your armband. You want to do this above your elbow. So it's going to be on this part of your arm. Not over here, but above the elbow. So let me put this above the elbow. And this one is definitely tricky to do by yourself. So if you have a friend who can help you put it on, make sure you have somebody help you. Let's see. So the tail's going to be up top. Oh, let me see if I can do this. This is going to be tricky. I might need another piece of tape, actually, so I can tape it on one side. And then tape it on the other. I think that's what I have to do. So let me do that tape here okay so now we have our peacock see this <laughs> isn't that fun your beautiful peacock and so the the fun thing about this one is that you can you can take this and with the uh, remember the decorations I was telling you about the peacocks they have those uh, beautiful Eye, they look like eyes, uh, decorations all along their feathers. And so if you want to use those, uh, do those on your fan, you can draw them in any way you like on the, on the fan here. I like to draw everything in after I make the fan because then I know exactly where everything's going to be um, when I make it. So let's do a few example eyes and 
what I like to do is pick a color that's dark, like dark purple for the middle, the middle of the eye. So it starts to look like that. And then take a lighter color and draw a circle around the eye. Let's find another one. Like that. So you start drawing these little circles around your, your eyes like that. And then maybe a dark color again. So it starts to look like that. So after you've made your fan, you can draw these beautiful eyes all over your peacock feathers. So that way when you put it back on, you can see those decorations are going to really start to pop. So however you want to de uh, decorate your peacock, you can do that. So that's a really simple, fun way to make a peacock. You could also add other things to the back of the fan. So if you wanted to make this even bigger, you could add other little pieces of paper. For example, if we cut a strip like this, and then turn this into a circle at the end, like an oval. It's actually going to look kind of like a spoon. And then we draw our eyes on this. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I have this little spoon shape. And then if I draw my really dark colored eye, and then a lighter color around it, and then I can draw a darker color around that. Then you can see if we glue this to the back of our fan, you can add more decorations like that. So you can make your, your peacock as big and beautiful as you like. Remember, their tails can be up to six feet long, which is actually 60%, up to 60% of their bodies. Wow. So there we go. That's how you would make your peacock. And remember that armband's gotta be above your elbow. Okay, that's a really important part of this. So we have our friend the lion. We have our friend the peacock. And up next is our friend the rattlesnake. <gasps> We're going to make a rattlesnake. <laughs> so this one requires a little more of a challenge. And the first thing we'll do is pick out a piece of paper. And I'm going to use a classic brown piece of paper for my rattlesnake. But it's also going to have some different color mixed in with it too. So how about we get a piece of purple paper or orange. I'll use orange. I'm going to use brown and orange. And the first thing that we want to do with this piece of paper is we're going to fold it in thirds. So to do that, first take your corner. So you have this long ways across your body. We're going to fold the third like this. And then fold it over again like that. So it's going to look like this. It should pop up like this. 
Okay. So after we fold it in thirds, then the next thing we do is actually fold it in half. So we're going to open it back up and then fold it in half like this. Just like if you were getting ready to make a paper airplane. So you do that first big fold. And now we'll take our scissors and you can see where the, the, the side that has the fold. So this is the open side on the bottom that folds up top. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start cutting into the paper, but I'm not going to go all the way to the end. Okay. So you can see I want to get about this far away. So it's about maybe two fingers away for you from the end. See that? So when you open it up, it starts to look like this. Okay. So keep it folded in half. And we're going to keep cutting. So an interesting fact about our friend, the rattlesnake, the rattle on the tail of the snake is made out of a protein that's called keratin. It's the same protein that your fingernails and your hair are made of. So look at your fingernails. That is what a rattlesnake's rattle is made out of. So maybe if you click your fingernails together, <laughs> you can start to hear the same sound. <laughs> All right, keep making these cuts. And if you go a little short, you can always go back and cut a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now after you're done cutting, it's going to look like this. So you still have your piece of paper. This almost looks like a, like a palm tree, doesn't it, on the side? It's starting to look really pretty. And the next thing we'll do is we'll take our orange piece of paper or whatever your second piece of paper is, and we're going to hold this up. It looks like it needs to be about half of the paper. So we're going to cut this in half on the, the long way. So we'll cut it in half. If you want, you can fold it first. So you can see how to cut it. And then here we go. We'll cut along the fold and now you have a half piece of paper like this and we're going to feed this through this piece of paper so first open this up all the way it's a lot easier than if it's folded so open it up all the way then take your half piece of paper and we're going to go under and then over and under like this. So it starts to look like this. See? So we go under, over, under, over. Once you get to the middle, it's a little tricky, but keep going. Okay. 
And then it looks like this when you have it inside. And now once it's like this, you can fold it back up in those thirds. So just the, the body of the snake fold into thirds. And it's going to look like this. See? So on this side, it's going to be, it might be all the way over. If it's not, that's okay, because we're going to glue this down. So take your glue stick. And then we're going to glue it. Brenda is asking, do I like to go to the zoo? I do like the zoo. Um, I have a friend at the Houston Zoo that I like to visit, Baylor the Elephant. Do you know Baylor the Elephant? I like Baylor. Baylor the Elephant. Do you like going to the zoo too, Brenda? If you do, let me know what your um, your favorite animals are to see at the zoo. You know, there's Baylor and uh, Tupelo. Okay, this is looking good. So we're gluing down. You can see I've glued down one side. And now we're going to glue the other side. go okay this is looking really good oops a little more glue in the middle too. There we go. Okay. Close up our glue stick. And it's looking like this. This is what our snake's starting to look like. Now we need to add a rattle to it too because this is a rattlesnake. But first, before we do that, if you want, you can take your uh, flat snake here and you can start to, like we did the fan for the peacock, you can actually fold this back and forth a little bit if you want to give your snake a bit of a zigzag look like this. Isn't that fun? And depending on how you look at it, see this? Now it's orange and now it's brown. So you have this kind of two, two tone snake that you're making. And the next part is we're going to add the rattle to it. So if you have a piece of paper, remember that orange piece of paper that I had that I cut in half? Well, I can use this part for the rattle and you can do the same thing for the rattle that we did for the big part of the snake. So if we take this and we fold this in thirds, you'll notice that it's a lot smaller. But that's because the rattle is going to be smaller. So we fold it in thirds, so it's like this. So see, it's just like the body of the snake, but, but it's just really tall and skinny. And then we take the same thing, we unfold it, and then fold it in half again. Oh, Evan said his favorite zoo animals are giraffes and monkeys. Awesome. Hi, Evan. Thanks for tuning in. 
So it's folded in half, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our scissors, and we're going to cut, but not all the way to the ends. Not all the way to the end. Make sure that you leave some room. And let's see how long we can make this. That looks pretty good. And for the last one, we'll make it a little bit bigger. So now it looks like this. See that? And we're going to do the same thing we did with the body. We'll glue in part of the snake. You could just fold it over this time. So if you fold it, now it's going to look like this for the rattle. See? Ooh. Do it fast enough. Almost starts to sound like a rattle. The cool thing about this snake is that the whole body, when you shake it, has a bit of a rattling sound. So, but you can see if we add our rattle to the end of it, there we go, we have our rattlesnake. So let's glue or tape our rattle to the end of this. So I'm gonna glue mine. First, let's glue the rattle together. We don't need a lot of glue for that part. Fold it over. Give it a good push down. And you can fluff it up a little bit. So there's our rattle. And then we'll glue it to the body. So remember, we'll glue it to the bottom of the body like this. So take the one end of your rattle and glue it to the bottom of the snake. Oop. This side. Make sure that your the open side is up for the rattle. So you can show it off. There we go. So here's our snake with our rattle. You can puff it up a little bit. Put your hand in there. Puff it up from the sides. If you want them flat, you can keep them flat. There we go. And so next, we need to add our wristband for this. Now, I like to add a couple of bands for this one. So we'll put two bands, one um, closer. So we want this to be with our, our hand as the head of the snake. And then we can have two bands that can be on the front and towards the back. Okay. So we can get a piece of paper. Let's see. I'll use this purple for my armbands. So you'll need two armbands. Maybe three if you have... This might be really big on your arm. See, and I'm going to tape my, usually tape my armbands. Now our friend the rattlesnake can be three to five feet long. Three to five feet. So how tall are you? <gasps> Somewhere between three to five feet? 
Well, if you stretched out a rattlesnake, if you held it above your head, would it touch the ground? Here we go. So we've got, um, you can see I put my two armbands right here, which they kind of look like feet right now. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Look at that. It's almost like their little feet. So if we take, um, take our armbands and put them on our arms, And you might need a friend to help you with this, but one of them is going to be around your wrist and the other will be up on your arm, uh, probably before the elbow. Okay. So here we go. That looks pretty good. All right, there it is. Look at that. It's my little rattlesnake arm. You kind of Let's see if I start them over here. See this? <laughs> That's perfect. So that is how you make your rattlesnake. And look, he's two colors. He's orange and then brown. So there you go. Which, uh, which animal was your favorite one today? Which tail was your favorite? Let us know. So many land tails. One more fact about our friend the rattlesnake. Their tails can rattle 60 times per second. Can you believe that? Wow, 60 times per second. That's super fast. So our friend the rattlesnake, our lion tail with the black tassel that all the other lions can follow, and our friend the peacock that would go over the, the top part of our elbow like that. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we have one vote for the snake today. Yeah, the snake's fun. I also like the lion, too. If you tuned in late, remember, you can use this lion tail with as an instrument. So you could play along with me. If you want to play along with your lion tail, here we go. Let's do a new song. Let's do a song about, maybe we can write a song together about our friends today. So we have a lion and he likes to run through the tall grass. Maybe somebody can give us a name for our lion in the for the song. So if you want to give us a name for the lion, let me know in the chat. <laughs> so we would have a lion. So I am a lion running through the tall grass. Follow, let's see, follow my tassel through the tall grass. Follow my, I have a long tail. I'm a lion and I run really fast. I have a black tassel on my tail. Follow me through the tall grass. How about that? I am a lion, I run really fast. I have a black tassel on my tail. Follow me through the tall grass. Evan says, Nip, Nip the Lion. I like it. Nip the Lion. My name's Nip the Lion. Follow me through the grass. Be 
because I know the best restaurant in town. <laughs> if you hang out with your friend the lion, you're probably going to eat very well. <laughs> you might have to wait though. Nip the lion. Nip the lion likes to eat just about everything that he can find. Nip the lion's king of the jungle. Nip the lion, king of the jungle, running through the tall grass. Nip the lion is king of the jungle, running through the tall grass. If you see a black tassel moving through the grass, that's Nip the lion. <laughs> what can we do for our friend the peacock? Our friend the peacock has tail feathers that are six feet long. So I need another name for our friend the peacock. So we had Nip the lion. And what would be the name of our, our friend, our friend the peacock? Tail feathers six feet long. They start to grow at age three is when the tail feathers start to show up. Oh, this is an interesting fact about our friend the peacock. They build their nests. So the, the peahens, they build their nests on the ground, but they actually like to roost or sleep or rest up in the trees. So remember earlier I asked you, can peacocks fly? Do you think they can fly? The answer is yes, they actually can fly, but not for a very uh, long distance. So they can fly. So we need a name for our friend the peacock. I'm the peacock and I can fly. But I can't fly very high in the sky. When I roost, I roost up in a tree. But when I build my nest, the ground is the best place for me. <laughs> there we go. Our friend, the peacock. What would be a good name? Let me know. Oh, Peter. How about Peter? Peter's a good one. Peter, I'm Peter the peacock. That's a good one. Peter the peacock likes to roost in the tree and sleep at night. And Peter the peacock likes to make a nest on the ground is the best place for the nest. <laughs> awesome, Peter the Peacock. Peter the Peacock also has beautiful tails, so maybe we could um, just beat it up or give it like a little bit of, um, almost like the tails opening up. It'd be like this, like a, like that. It feels like it's opening up, like fanning open. I'm Peter the Peacock. Look at my tail. Isn't it great to be me? <laughs> Peter the Peacock with the beautiful tail. And when I roost, I roost up in the tree. <laughs> there we go. Peter the Peacock. Okay, now we have our friend, the snake. So you remember our, uh, our little friend, the snake? He's a rattlesnake. So he's got, a, he's got a shake. He's a rattlesnake. He likes to shake. What could our friend, the rattlesnake, uh, be named? Let's see. How about...
about hmm for our friend the snake what could we name him I know I know an interesting name but I want to hear what your name for the snake would be my name is the snake and I love to shake my rattle every day it goes Snake, snake bite the snake. Okay, I like it. I'm snake by the snake. I like to shake my rattle and it goes. I'm three to five feet long. My tail is made of keratin, just like your fingernails. And I can shake it. Oh, I can shake it. 60 times per second. Snake bite the snake. Snake bite the snake. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was so much fun. Snake bite the snake. I like it. Coming soon. I know last time we talked about our friend, uh, when we did Water Tales, we talked about our friend, the Great White Shark. And I said, Great White Shark sounds like he would wear like a leather jacket and be the, the cool kid at school. But man, I think Snake bite the snake. They could either be really good friends. I think they'd probably be really good friends. Um, or maybe they would be arch rivals. I don't know. Snake bite the snake and our friend the great white shark. Wow. Well, uh, I'm going to leave you with one more song today. And like I was saying before, uh, I was asked, what was my favorite land animal? Well, this one is going to be about my friend Jojo with the monkey. So here we go. This song is called Monkeys. <laughs> Oh, we had another snake name come in, Draco. Draco? <laughs> Hashtag Harry Potter fan. Yes! <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Michelle. This is our friend, the monkey. Here we go. And if you want, you can get your monkey arms ready. Would you like to climb a tree like monkeys, 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 monkeys? Would you like to climb a tree like monkeys, monkeys? Two, three, four. Monkeys are swinging all around those jungle trees. Baboon's red booty is shaking off the bees. The bees are making honey oh so sweet. Baboon is eating all that honey from the bees, that honey from the bees. Monkeys are singing, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ah. Lemur is looking all around what's going on. The bird of paradise is singing out a song. Like to climb a tree like monkeys, 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 monkeys. Would you like to climb a tree like monkeys, monkeys? Yeah. Did you know that spider monkeys have what's called a prehensile tail, and that allows them to swing from the trees? That's right. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you so much to Harris County Public Library for having me here. And it's the 100 year anniversary of Harris County Public Library. So I hope we're celebrating. Woo! Make sure you shake your tail with us. On Saturday too, we're gonna shake our tails. 
my name is Andy Roo and I will see you around the Andy Rooniverse. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank, that was so much fun, Andy Roo. Thank you. Thank you so much for invited, uh, for inviting us on this journey with you. We can't see, wait to see you again this weekend for part two. So for all of you out here who attended tonight, just in case you forgot, you just earned five points for your summer reading total. If you aren't registered yet for the summer reading program, go ahead and head over to hcpl.beanstack.org to create an account and get registered. We have many virtual programs coming up, so be sure to keep an eye on hcpl.net for updates. Thank you again, Andrew, and thank you to everyone who joined us this evening. We hope you have a great night. Bye. Bye, everybody.